Romans chapter 15, Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. Before we get into the chapter, let's take a look at how we're saved. I declare the gospel, so the I is Paul, and the gospel is the good news, by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins. So he died for our sins on Calvary's cross, and it was a mystery that he would die for our sins in mystery also. The Gentiles in the dispensation of grace. According to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the rest was prophesied information. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Everyone will spend eternal life in one place or another, and we hope that you will spend it in the good place. So let's get into our chapter. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. So we who are strong in Pauline faith ought to put up with the weaknesses of those who are weak in the faith, faith and not just to think about ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Let's every one of us share what we know and educate others. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So Christ didn't just think about himself. He thought of others. And the reproaches or evil speaking of them that reproach thee, the believers, fell on me. He, he, he bore the blame. So um, let's take a little look at this one. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, such as Psalm 69.9 that Paul just quoted, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, when we look at all of the Bible, rightly divided, we can have comfort knowing what God said to Israel as well as what he said to us. Um, in Acts 9, let me show that, Acts 9, something unprophesied occurred. The as Arisen, ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ, returned from heaven a year after his crucifixion and appeared to Saul of Tarsus. And his light was so bright that Saul of Tarsus, also known as Paul, was blinded. But he saw the Lord and he asked, Who are thou? And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And so Saul believed that Jesus of Nazareth was the son of God and he had in the past been persecuting Peter's group the little flock but now he believed and received a spirit so that was in Acts 9 when the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace began God changed a program nearly 2,000 years ago and people are still trying to live under the old program Christ's earthly ministry in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and early Acts. So, he, Jesus Christ appointed Saul of Tarsus to be the one apostle to the one body of Christ. And Satan was surprised because this was unprophesied information. Paul said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. I'm the leading sinner. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them that should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So Paul was the first one into the body of Christ, and he's a pattern for the rest of us that should believe on Jesus Christ and he's the pattern that we follow. Our spiritual life will not function on the basis of ignorance. 
Rightly dividing allows us to understand and believe all the verses in the Bible. So, Adam and Eve blamed others. Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent for their breaking of God's one law. But the Lord said, Father, place his or her blame on me and let them have my righteousness. So he took the blame. Paul will now say now. And he's, he will say now several times in this chapter. Now means today, this present dispensation of grace. So now the God of patience and consolation grant you in Rome, believers in Rome, to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. So we're going to also be willing to bear the reproach of others. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this brings glory to the Father. When we have one mind, how can we have one mind? We follow the same you know, instructions that Christ gave through Apostle Paul. And so we we're, have one mouth. We're all saying the same thing. Romans to Philemon is the instruction for the body of Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So we're going to receive the weaker brother into our assemblies. And we're going to try to help them to understand um, the mystery and to be strong in the faith. So now he's, Paul says, now again, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Okay, so Jesus Christ in his previous ministry was in the past, in time past during his earthly ministry, he came to the circumcision, which is the Jews. For the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, which are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even uh, David and the others in prophecy. What does the new King James say? Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. So it. The new King James says, has become, making it sound like he's, he's currently a servant to the Jews. When Paul said in the King James Bible that he was in the past a minister to the Jews. Now he's a minister to all Gentiles through Paul. So I have a little angry face here, angry eyebrows in his mad face because the New King James Version is false and so are the modern Bibles, modern um, English Bibles. We, we need to study the King James Bible. That's perfect. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. So he came to save the Jews so that they could be a channel of blessing to the Gentiles in prophecy. And Paul's going to continue with that. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. So this is uh, quoting Psalm. Oh, this was, this one over here was quoting um, Psalm 1849. And now he's quoting Psalm 117.1. So the, the Gentiles are going to rejoice with the Jews because of what the Lord has done and again praise the Lord all ye Gentiles and laud him all ye people so honor and praise the Lord Jesus Christ in prophecy because there are Jews and Gentiles in prophecy just as there are Jews and Gentiles in mystery and again I say as saith there shall be a root out of Jesse 
and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Okay, so now he's quoting Isaiah 11, 1 and 10. And Jesus Christ was a root out of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David, King David. But this quote here um, is from Deuteronomy 32, 43, the last verse in the Song of Moses. So um, this, the fact that Gentile salvation was going to happen was prophesied in uh, prophecy. But now it's Gentile salvation is apart from Israel's program. And we're going to see that. So here is what Isaiah 11.10 says. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. So Jesus Christ will be a sign for, all, for the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So this is the kingdom rest during the thousand year when Christ rules on the earth. So a, a root is, is life source. Now Paul says, now the God of hope, so now in this present dispensation of grace, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So now the Gentiles can be happy in this dispensation and have all kinds of joy and hope because we have the Holy Ghost in us when we believe the gospel that we can abound in hope that we're going to be raptured and be with the Lord and it's by the power of the Holy Ghost working through us and I Paul myself also am persuaded of you my brethren that ye also are full of goodness filled with all knowledge able also to admonish one another so he's convinced that the believers in Rome are full of goodness and all knowledge and able to admonish one another with the word of God. Because how do we admonish one another? We do it with verses from the Bible. And they, um, the Romans already had copies of Galatians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. And now they're getting this letter to the Romans. So they they now will have six letters to help them admonish one another. Paul said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3.16.17 So all scripture, there is doctrine in Romans that is foundational that's why in the Bible God put Romans first then Corinthian letters are reproof and then Galatian letter is correction so it's the order in the Bible is for our benefit Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. So Paul is writing by inspiration of Jesus Christ because he has been appointed to have the authority of being the um, apostle of the Gentiles. And so he that's the grace that's been given to him of God. It's the office that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. So he is the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles because we talked about how it Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. So Jesus Christ was um, a minister to the circumcision, to the Jews. But Paul is the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles during mystery. And he's ministering the gospel of God, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
for our sins, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Sanctified means set apart, because we have the Holy Ghost in us, and we're, you know, going to be offered up to God for his service, not only here on earth, but in the future. So, let's talk a little bit about Peter. Peter was part of the little flock. Fear not, little flock, for it is, the fa it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. So that's the kingdom on earth. So even after um, Cornelius was saved in Acts 10, what are the Jews doing in the little flock? Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. Acts 11.19. So in Acts 11, after Cornelius was saved, the Jews are still only preaching to the Jews because they know that the Jews have to become a kingdom of priests so they can be a channel of blessing and prophecy during the kingdom on earth, the 1,000 years on earth, to, you know, minister to the Gentiles. So... Here is a Bible timeline, and we can see that prophecy, mystery, prophecy is how the Bible is laid out from Genesis to Revelation. So prophecy goes from Genesis to Acts 9 when Paul was saved on the road to Damascus. Then we're going to find out that in Acts 15, the little flock, Peter's group, who didn't take part in the stoning of Stephen, but continued preaching will be put on hold. So we're living during the dispensation of grace that began when Jesus Christ appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus and will end when Jesus Christ appears again to rapture the church, the body of Christ. So we're living in a giant parenthesis between these two appearings of Jesus Christ called the but now, and we are the people that will live in heaven. After we're raptured, we go to the judgment seat of Christ for evaluation of our service on earth. Then there'll be a little time, then the tribulation, the seven years of tribulation that was delayed or postponed will start when Antichrist signs the seven-year covenant with Israel to offer animal sacrifices in the newly built temple. Then after those seven years, Jesus Christ, second coming and to set up his 1000 year reign on earth and so that's how uh, the books that we follow is romans to philemon but the in after our rapture hebrews to revelation will help the jews alive then to get through the tribulation and into the kingdom so there was an overlap after the stoning of stephen In Acts 7, the nation of Israel fell, but Peter and the 11 apostles continued until they were placed on hold in Acts 15. So <clears throat> the little flock was put on hold at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. So there was an overlap between Acts 9 and Acts 15 when a believer could be saved into P Paul's group or into Peter's group, depending on which gospel he heard. So Cornelius was saved into Peter's group. Okay, let's see where we were. <clears throat> okay. Okay, finish that. Okay, so I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. So since he's the apostle of Gentiles, he can glory in those things that God has chosen him to do. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. So he doesn't want to glory in anything that Christ has not worked through him 
to make the Gentiles in the dispensation of grace obedient to follow the, inst the, the word, the instructions Paul gives, and, and the work that those instructions causes them to do, like sharing the, the information. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So he's saying that he, from Jerusalem all the way around about to Illyricum, he's preached the gospel of Christ now, using mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. So he, Paul was given spiritual gifts of healing, raising the dead, all kinds of, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, he was blinded, Illimus, the sorcerer, in, in Acts 13. So the purpose of the sign gift was to confirm God's word and God's minister. So, you know, he had the proof of, the, of being an apostle. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, that other man being Peter. Okay, because <clears throat> we're going to see here that um, there were little flock churches in, in Pontus and Bithynia, northern Asia Minor. But Paul had gone from Jerusalem and he had preached all the way up to Illyricum, which is the Dalmatian coast, the former Yugoslavian area. And then he's going to come down and then he's going to he's come to Cor Corinth after coming down that western coast of Greece and now he wants to go back to Jerusalem with some money for them there and then after that he wants to go to Rome and then as uh, swing by those in Rome to on his way to Spain we're going to see that but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. So he quotes Isaiah 52.15, that those who have not, was, were not spoken to shall see, and those who have not heard the good news shall understand. So he's making a parallel that this is also applicable to what he's doing in mystery. But now having no more place in these parts and having a desire these many years to come unto you in Rome, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward, by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. So he's going to be brought thitherward to Spain after being filled, somewhat filled with their company. So he's not going to spend a lot of time there and in Rome, but some. So he was hindered because he had been so busy preaching um, in all those areas. But now having no more place in these parts. Now that I've preached to all those places and spread, you know, the news that believers today go to heaven and not in the kingdom on earth, um, he, he has time to come to them. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints, for it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia, northern and southern Greece, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. So they have collected some money for the saints in Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily, and their debtors they are, for if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. So he's saying that the Gentiles owe a debt to the little flock believers because they have now 
been partakers of their spiritual things, such as eternal life, having the Holy Ghost in them, being um, having the adoption of sons, and um, you know, living with God forever, but in heaven, not on earth. So now their their duty of the Gentiles is to minister material things and help those little flock believers who thought they were going into the tribulation, but God postponed that, to have the money they need in order to survive. When, therefore, I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. So after I've given them the money that has been collected and that contribution, then I will come by you. Then I'll, I'll come to you after that. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So he, somehow Christ has communicated to Paul that when he arrives in Rome, he will come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. He will have understood all of the mystery, even though it might not have been all written down. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. And so he's asking for specific intercessory prayer along with his prayers. And there's going to be three things. One, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea so the, that he won't be killed by the unbelieving Jews. And that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints. That they will receive the money gift. That the believers will receive the money gifts. And three, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. That he will be able to come to Rome and be refreshed by them. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So did, was um, Paul's prayers answered? And they were. But first let me show you that in Acts 16, Paul was prevented from going to uh, the little flock church's area. Now when they had gone through Phryg Phrygia, and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Acts 16, 6 and 7. So on his second apostolic journey, he was not allowed to go over here to Bithynia. Okay, when they were in Mysia. So he had that dream of, you know, the Macedonian man, and so they went to Macedonia. And so that's how the gospel spread to Europe. Paul's gospel. Okay, so now we're looking at, did, did Paul's um, prayer get answered? And landing at Syracuse. So now we're going to look at Acts 28, although Paul is writing this letter in Acts 20. So Syracuse is um, in Italy, Italian, um, where, where is Syracuse? Syracuse is on Sicily. So they're going to make a little, they're going to go around the, the toe, they're gonna, and then they're going to go up to Petuli, Petioli, which is, um, you know, the... Um, they're going to land there, which is the harbor to Rome. But it's kind of a far way. And that's where, um, between there is the three taverns, taverns and Appy Forum. We tarried there three days, and from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came, to, came the next day to Petioli, the harbor for Rome. But it's still a long ways where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. 
where they're walking now. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apiforum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. So he was so happy to see that the Roman saints that he had sent that letter of the Roman letter to were, you know, coming to meet him a far way and, you know, respected Paul's apostleship. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. So that's Acts twenty eight twelve through sixteen. So Paul lived in in a uh, his own hired house. So he made it to Rome. He had had delivered the money to the saints in Jerusalem, and he, he was still alive. So his prayers were answered. Now, <clears throat> um, I want to look back in Acts fifteen at the Jerusalem Council, where Paul. Barnabas and Titus met with Peter who's also called Cephas and John and James because at the Jerusalem council the the agreement was written in Galatians but contrary wise when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter so Paul had the gospel of the uncircumcision to the Gentiles and Paul and Peter preached the gospel of the circumcision to the Jews. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So we have different messengers, Paul um, and Peter and different gospels and the Jesus Christ working in both of them to different audiences. And when Cephas, no, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. So the little flock believers had the Holy Spirit to recognize that God was doing something special with Paul. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen that's all lost Jews and Gentiles and they unto the circumcision the circumcision those saved that they had already saved those that were already saved because not the lost Jews that were in the synagogue still only they would that we should remember the poor that's them <laughs> they're they're poor that um, we should, oh no, the same which I was also forward to do. Galatians 2.10. So this is 2.7 through 10. So Paul also wanted to help the little flock. And so now he's, he's true to his word and he's going to give them that money. So the important thing to know is that by one cross, Christ saved two groups. Christ has two ministries, one for his earthly believers, Peter's group, and one for his heavenly believers, Paul's group. But we, in Paul's group, we are the body of Christ, and we're one God's one true church in this dispensation, made up of believers from all nations who will live eternal in the heavens. So God... Some will live on the earth and some will live in the heaven. So I forgot to say last week um, when I was quoting, you know, every knee shall bow. Once we go up to the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to, um, you know, every knee is going to bow. And, and it's going to be a good thing because we will give an account for our service on earth. And Paul in... Um, Romans 14.11 was quoting Isaiah. In 14.11 it says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. And so every knee is going to bow to Jesus Christ. 
Okay, and it's quoted from Isaiah. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient times? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord, all capitals, Jehovah? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. He's the only God and he's the Savior. I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely, okay, so every that's, that's the prophecy right there. That every knee is going to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ and glorify him. Surely shall one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. So the seed of Israel will glory in the Lord, and so will the Gentiles in mystery. Isaiah 45, 21 through 25. So now let's take a look at this timeline here. So in time past, in Genesis to Acts 9 prophecy, the Israel is over the Gentiles. During um, this dispensation of grace, after Paul was saved, and before the rapture, Jews and Gentiles are on the same level. And after our rapture, in prophecy, after the tribulation, there'll be the judgment of the nations, of who, how they helped the little flock during that are added to. See how these little red men and little red men here? There's more added to Peter's group during the tribulation. And then Israel, after Christ's return, will be over the Gentiles again in, in more prophecy. So um, God has temporarily postponed Israel's program and inserted the dispensation of grace. Okay. And so we can admonish one another by saying the Jewish feast days don't belong to us at all. None of them. And also we can talk about the judgment of the nations. So the judgment of the nation is another judgment of the Gentiles. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew twenty five thirty four. So how can <clears throat> um, the Gentiles have that, you know, uh, kingdom. They, well, the answer is Israel will be above the Gentiles, but the, the Gentiles are invited to be part of, you know, worship of, of the Messiah, the King of the Jews, and it, they will be as sheep. They won't be sheep, but the, he'll separate the Gentiles at the judgment of the nations as if they were sheep and goats. And the goats will go to eternal damnation. Those who didn't bless Israel according to the Abrahamic covenant during the seven years of tribulation. Okay, when, when the uh, Antichrist was set up in Jerusalem. So... Um, during, after our rapture, the Abrahamic covenant will still be in effect. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So they will need to bless Israel during, after our, our rapture. And the Davidic uh, covenant mentioned in Second Samuel 7.16 and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. So the Lord Jesus Christ's throne will be established. And King David will also be resurrected to rule in Israel while the Lord Jesus Christ rules over the, the earth. 
Um, but Paul said to us, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the phones of the Gentiles be come in. Romans 11.25 So they're only temporarily blinded, and only in part because Jews can be saved and have eternal life in heaven right now. The mystery is a new chance for the Gentiles to live in heaven. And what are we doing? And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So we're waiting for Jesus to appear and deliver us from the wrath to come, which is the seven years of tribulation, to take us out before the tribulation begins. Now, what did Jesus Christ on earth say? And when he called unto him, he, um, and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So the twelve apostles were set, told not uh, to go in the way of the Gentiles. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans go ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the twelve went to the lost house of the sheep of, of where were the, the, the true sheep, his, his lost sheep, trying to find them so they could be part of the kingdom. In Matthew 10, 5 through 6. And then to the woman of Canaan he said, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he was not sent to the Gentiles in his earthly ministry. So some books that can help you is God's Secret, Rightly Dividing Roman Study Guide, Romans a Concise Commentary, and these are on Amazon. Please like, share, and subscribe. And our website is MarianneManley.com. And our YouTube channel, Salvation Rightly, Div comma, Rightly Dividing, comma, and the Rapture. Truth Be Told also carries our um, videos. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. And um, please like, share, and subscribe.